on the subject of us talking about, you know, keeping your word and... Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. <laughs> this one was very specific. So, old mate, if you're watching this... Um, I'm Christian Obi, a bit, Because mate, uh, Stat, Stat, Stat has obviously sent you the details to this podcast to <laughs> hear the story. What was his agenda? <laughs> um, Ecclesiastes 4, you said? Ecclesiastes 4, you said? 5. 5, sorry. Ecclesiastes 5... I'm a child. Ecclesiastes, okay. Ecclesiastes 5, verses 4 and 5. But when thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and pay not. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So I shouldn't be laughing. That is so funny. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. But I feel like Mickey Anna when he laughed. And laughed no, 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 but it's fu- it's bro. <laughs> like how how relevant's this? <laughs> In layman's terms, it's saying, listen, if you're gonna make a promise to God, keep the promise. Yeah. God wants you to keep any promise you make to Him. He would prefer you not make a promise to Him, than make a promise and break it. Hmm. I see, okay, cool. I'll, I'll join in there. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just laughed because that was it was just very funny. But sorry, but, no, but in, in saying this though, it shows us like what we need to be like Christians in the non-Christian world. Like mm. we, we live in an imperfect world, right? Mm. That was an imperfect thing that happened today. Obviously, mm. you can laugh all you want, Jim. No, no, no just, this is perfect. I know, like, I know. If I ever preach a sermon on this, it's all going to be revolved. If around you lose your next Evo. <laughs> <laughs> you're preaching to you Go on man's man I've got this Friday I'm preaching this He can't tell me no Nah But when thou vowest the When you make a promise Keep the promise And God would prefer You not make a promise Than break that promise yeah. I think uh, When we We put it in a context of uh, When we make a commitment to God Yeah yeah, And that's what this is yeah. saying here And I think uh, Especially when we go to conferences Or we've got TNS Or like, mm. Which is obviously examples That we go to No leadership. no 100% uh, Even normal Like it's just standard church service as yeah, well Where we hear 100%. something that convicts us And then we make a decision on it So God I'm going to improve And how many times have we Broken that promise And we still break them till now And I think the reason for that bro Is because when you get into those scenarios Whether it's conferences Camps Normal church service You get so caught up With the emotion of it Especially at conferences or camps, yep. there's a big there's a big emotional high going, on, and they're not a bad thing, but there's a big emotional high happening. So you get into this spirit of I just want to do anything I can to please God, and I want to make this commitment, I want to make this vow. But yep. the problem is, a lot of us make these vows and commitment out of emotions mm. rather than making them out of um, truly loving and respecting God and wanting to have our lives change. Mm. So that's why when you see those promises and those commitments made at those um, events. They end up dying out two weeks later. You know what I mean? So like for me, the vows and the commitments I've made to God that have actually stuck are the ones that I've made like in my living room or in my bedroom, like where I realized where I really need to stop doing this or I really need to have a life change. Um, They're the ones that I've stuck with. Mm. So I think you just can't be run by emotion. Mm. Agreed. Agreed, yeah. And uh, I think, because um, the verse five, it, it better is it that thou shouldst, vow, shouldst not vow than, thou, than that thou shouldst vow and not pay. Sorry, stuff like that. But it's saying, if you're going to make the commitment, make the commitment. If you're not going to make the commitment, don't waste my time. Yeah. I, I feel like that's, that's what God's really saying here because we're not making the commitment until, mate. A bit too soon. We're not making a commitment to get a car. We're not looking to get an earthly purchase or to get something that is just going to help us temporarily or for whatever it is. But we're making a commitment to Christ. That's right. And... I think coming off the Easter services and when we really daily we should reflect on Christ and, and mm. the sacrifice made. But in the in the in the holiday of Easter, I think it's so important that we do continue to do that, um, and we continue to realize just who it is we're serving. A hundred percent. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. We gotta we gotta break it down to ourselves that we are serving a living Christ who's done more than everything for us. And the least we can do is if we commit something to him, keep it. It's just it can be so easy to make promises to God. That's the problem, especially. Um, in Christian circles, growing up a Christian, all that sort of stuff. Like, it's so easy to make promises to Him, mm. but you really need to think about how you're making that promise and why you're making that promise. Is that promise out of just pure emotion? Is it out of just something that's happening in your life at that moment, or is this something that you truly want to keep for the rest of your days and like truly keep to that promise? And that's-